Everything has been upended during COVID with my family. Panna had to let his apartment go in Los Angeles and can't meet girls for fear of bringing COVID back here. I miss hot women, man. What do you mean? Like going on a date? No, like just going to a bar and seeing someone. My mother had been planning a trip to Iran or to visit my other brother, Paimon, in LA, but she's been left in limbo as well. Even I didn't expect to still be here after my road trip from California. I thought COVID would be gone by September. My father's the only one who seems to be okay with transitioning from doing his daily gym routine at the Jewish Community Center for hikes in Mended Park. But even he misses the JCC. If I could go to JCC, it would be better, he tells me on another hike. But this park is good too. Regardless of the pandemic, each of us has found our own rhythm. My mother cooks and walks circles in the cul-de-sac in front of the house. Panna keeps making his music for television. My father hikes and works on his digital artwork. At least three hours for each phone to present. And I'm busy making these episodes and applying for jobs or teaching online. You're very talented. If you practice, I can make you first chair. Don't you want to be first chair? Uh, I do, I said. I'll practice. The only thing that unites us all together as a family is Hana Kuchak, or its translation into English, Little House. As soon as 7 p.m. rolls around, we all gather around the television, watch the news for about 10 minutes, and then one person, usually my mother, says, Put on Hana Kuchak. My parents love Little House on the Prairie. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's a television series from the 70s that depicts a family recently moving to a small community in Minnesota shortly after the Civil War. Michael Landon, the show's star, is the head of the family, and the show bounces back and forth between him dealing with frontier life, raising his children, and the various problems that arise from toiling a farm and getting along with members of the community. Each episode usually ends with some type of moral about how to be a better neighbor and to do right by your family. They're very life-affirming and just what the doctor ordered during a pandemic. In fact, my father loves them so much that he won't watch more than one episode a day, saving them like Willy Wonka does his chocolate bars. We cannot watch too many, he tells us. He is almost finished. There are eight seasons on Amazon. They're in the middle of season five now. Mary has lost her eyesight and the entire Ingalls family has moved to the city to be closer to her school for the blind. Pa, Ma told me what you did but we thought it right to get this for you instead. Mary says, holding up a fiddle Charles had pawned to get her a hat for her birthday. Charles starts crying at his daw's gesture, and I look over at my father doing the same. I wonder why shows like this one aren't the norm these days for such a time. Maybe there are other folks finding programs like this one that offer an uplifting message, something altogether different from the Bridgertons and Gossip Girls out there. I used to watch Hana Kuchak every day after school growing up in Indiana and Delaware. It was usually Hana Kuchak and then Mr. Rogers. Then I go play with John and Jay down the street. They were my best friends in Delaware. And having Hana Kuchak served as sort of a way for me to live my life in my American community. Like Laura, I had my share of dealing with neighborhood bullies like Nellie and Willie. Oh, we're really scared. And I had the good times of exploring and playing with John and Jay. Mostly playing football, baseball, and kick the can. When there weren't enough kids to play with, that's when John and Jay and I usually came up with our own games like Nutmeg, where we had to kick a soccer ball between each other's legs for points, or pencil cracking, where you got your best Ticonderoga number two pencil and it took turns snapping your pencil against the other person's until one would break. But sometimes our games were a bit more ambitious. I remember one day, Jay and I decided to make a bow and arrow. We really didn't know how to make wood bit. So I came up with the idea for Jay to stand on one side of a two by four while I stood on the other. We figured if we stood like this long enough, it would eventually bend far enough for us to strap some string on the ends for a bow and arrow. It's not working, Jay told me. You're not heavy enough. That's when I decided to do one big jump. I counted the three and then leapt right on the side of the wood that was jutting out from Jay's front steps. No sooner I jumped that the wood jostled underneath Jay's foot and I saw everything in slow motion. Me landing in midair, Jay trying to adjust, and then me hitting the piece of wood a bit too late and it catapulting straight into my face. At first I just saw black and tried to grope around for Jay because I couldn't see a thing. Oh man, Jay said and ran inside to tell his mom. Jay, I shouted, I can't see. Jay ran back when he saw his mom was at home. She's not home, he told me. Help me, Jay, I shouted. That's when my eyes started to come back, but instead of light, I just saw red. I touched the top of my head and could feel the blood gushing out. Oh man, Jay said, you're bleeding. That's when I started crying and then screaming. Mom! I screamed and started running down the road to my house. My mom must have been outside or my screaming was loud enough because she ran out of the house just as I was getting there and she started screaming right along with me in Farsi. 
Benjamin been born. <laughs> Mom, I told her, I'm blind. Since I had been watching Mary on Kana Kuchak, I was pretty sure I was going to be blind like her. I started thinking about what my life would be like, and I started crying again. I think I cried the whole way to the hospital. I really admired Mary and her going to the blind school, but I didn't want to be blind, and I told my mom as much. I'm sorry, Mom, I told her. I'm sorry I made myself blind. My mother just kept screaming and crying louder now, praying as she drove into the parking lot of the hospital. Hold on, please stop. Don't make my son blind. As we sat in the waiting room, I thought about Mary again. She was so brave. I figured that if I was supposed to be blind, I might as well get used to it. I had to be more like Mary. I had to be like Hannah Kuchak. It'll be okay, I told my mom. I can start a school for the blind. What are you talking, boy? My mother cried. When the doctor finally cleaned off all the blood, I could start seeing a small light that got brighter and brighter. And then, just like that, see, the doctor told us, when you cut your head, there's a lot of blood, but this isn't that bad. I'm not sure if I got stitches or not. You get stitches, my mom says now as we all watch Mary dealing with her blindness. Many stitches. Really, I say? I don't remember. I watch the rest of Kanakuchak with my family. I forget all about the insurrection or not having work during the pandemic or being cooped up for days at a time. You need to find someone like Mrs. Ingalls, my dad tells me. This is a good woman. Hana Kuchak again, Pana says, looking up between texting on the couch. This show again? Just one more today, my dad says. <laughs> I want to send a telegram to Ma and Pa and tell them we're getting married. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. There is a time to be quiet. There is a time to stand up. <laughs> <laughs>